If you've seen my other video on making 3D printable models from LiDAR data, you may have noticed that some of the data sets that are available on OpenTopo uh, don't work with that workflow. For whatever reason, there's differences in the file format, and you can't use them with the tools that we used in the other video. Uh, so this video will show you another slightly simpler way of doing it. Um, in this case, I'm going to start with uh, a topo set that I'm extracting of Bodega Head on the California coast. Now, assuming you have that data downloaded and unzipped, which is the same way as we did it in the other video, so I won't waste time with doing that again, um, if you try to run it into 3DEM, you probably get a file error. Um, so in this case, uh, we're going to use a program called MicroDEM, uh, which is brought to us uh, courtesy of the United States Naval Academy. It's written by a professor there for doing all kinds of stuff that they want to do with DEM data, um, but for our purposes, we're going to use one tiny little bit of, of the program. Uh, we're going to go uh, in the Open menu and say Open DEM, and then we have the same uh, output.tin file we're going to open that. So if that all works properly, you should see an image of your data that you've downloaded, um, sort of a, a pseudo 3D shaded uh, image here. Um, the only thing we need to do in this program is to go up to the file menu, go down to save DEM, and down to the appropriately named caveat emptor, or the buyer beware menu, and click on the export as 3D OBJ file. And then we click and we save that. And then we're good to go. And now we import the resulting OBJ file into Blender. In this case, you can see it's sitting on its side, um, which is what happens with uh, um, programs that think that the Y-axis should be vertical instead of the Z-axis. Easy to fix, uh, we hit R, for rotate x around the x-axis, minus 9, 0, and hit enter. And there we are in our uh, traditional orientation here. Now you notice it has these sort of weird legs hanging off it, um, and that's sort of a bug in the, in the export process. Um, from micro DEM, um, but you know they say it's the caveat emptor menu, you can't complain because it's free. Um, so what we're going to do to get rid of those is uh, hit, uh, hit tab to go into the edit mode. And then, I'm sorry, the computer is running very slow because it's a very huge, huge, huge file. Um, but what we want to do is go into edge select mode Okay, that re model was just simply too high res for us to be able to do this uh, effectively on, on the video without waiting a long time for it to process. So I've opened up a much smaller resolution video. Now, uh, there's some interesting stuff that's happening here. You see how it's getting kind of cropped as we're rotating it around? That's because this is uh, quite a large scale model in, in the, uh, the program. Um, the way to fix that is to go to over here where it says clipping, which is in the view box on the side menu here, and just put in a really big number. It um, doesn't really matter how big as long as it's bigger than a thousand. Um, and now you basically defined your view field, the, the volume that you're going to render as being big enough to contain our model without clipping it. Okay. Now it's behaving itself a little bit better. You can see we have these sort of funny legs hanging off the sides of, of the scan, which we don't want. Um, but I say you can't really complain because it's free software. So what we're going to do is go into edit mode and deselect everything. And usually the edge uh, mode works best for that. And hit the C for circle select. And we're just going to paint over that. And actually, before we do that, let's hit enter to commit that. Before we do that, let's go hit Z to go into wireframe mode so that we're selecting everything through the whole object, not just the stuff we can see from this side. That looks better. See, we're selecting all of the parts there now. 
Okay, we hit enter. Now we'll say delete. And in this case, we're gonna say delete edges because for whatever reason, the parts that extend down from the model um, seem to contain edges, but no faces or vertices. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. It's just, you know, kind of a funny bug in the program, but we can work around it as I just showed. Okay, so here we have our nicely cleaned up uh, topo. Now you notice that this is just a surface. It's not a solid model, so we can't print this yet. But I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to do that um, in just a second. The first thing that I recommend doing at this point um, is saving it as an STL file and then re-importing it into Blender as an STL file. So you're working on the, the file that you've saved and then re-imported. Um, because the OBJ file that's created by MicroDM has some weird quirks to it that don't get along really well with Blender. Uh, if you try to decimate the file, it does really weird things. Um, you fix all that by just exporting it as an STL and bringing it back uh, as an STL. So now that we've brought it back into Blender as an STL, it's cleaned up the geometry of the, of the uh, surface here, turned everything into triangles, and Blender's a lot happier working with it. Um, now, there's a couple of different ways that we can go about turning this into a solid. Um, and I use them for you know, different uh, tools for different situations. Um, you notice this has sort of a funny shape to it because of the limits of the data set that we extracted it from. So suppose we want to make a nice uh, square cube out of it. Um, we can take a cube and let's scale this up a little bit and say start with it at about 400 maybe. There you go. And we can scale it from there as well. And uh, we can create a cube which overlaps the area that we want to scan. Now, with this technique, your cube can't hang off the edges of the surface. So if you have something like this, where you see here, your cube hangs off the edge of the surface, that tends to cause errors in the next step. So we wanna make sure that everything is, uh, the cube is completely uh, contained within the surface that we're working on. I can also um, say S, Z, and scale the Z direction down just to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so now when we've got that set up, make sure we're looking at it from the top here okay with the cube selected we go over to the modifier menu and we're going to select boolean and we say intersect on the surface that we've just loaded and depending on how fast your computer works that could take seconds or it could take minutes uh, um, and it also depends a lot on how big your data set is um, my computer took only a couple seconds to, to do that. Now we click apply and it's all done and we have our printable solid part. If we hide the uh, surface, we can see what we've got here, okay? Now this is uh, still a Blender object, so if we go into edit mode, you'll see it has very clean geometry on the bottom. Um, if we export it and then re-import it as STLs, all of this will get triangulated, um, and that's the, the form we're actually going to be saving in. So this isn't uh, this is just an internal format for Blender right now. So that's useful if uh, you want to crop a cube out of the the object that you're working with. It doesn't have to be a cube. You can use a cylinder. You can create any arbitrary shape and then boolean uh, the uh, the topography surface onto the top of it. Um, but sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, Booleans in Blender are a little bit quirky as we've talked about before in, in a couple other videos. Um, so this is another technique that you can use. Um, this is also useful if you have a complete uh, data set here you wanna keep it all. Um, for instance, um, sometimes I, I chop up a larger terrain into building blocks, into individual pieces that I print separately and then glue them together when I'm done. Um, and if you're gonna do that, you don't wanna trim the edges because you're throwing away data there that, that you would be losing. Um, so this technique works well for that. Uh, 
we're going to take the the model here go back into uh, let's select it go back into edit mode I like to hit one so I'm looking straight on it with everything selected I hit E to extrude Z and then Z again to lock it to the global Z axis uh, and then just pull down now if you look closely you can see that we've extruded the top surface down um, so basically we've got an inverse uh, you know a negative of the top surface on the bottom of the model which isn't really what we want to print um, we want a nice flat surface that we can print on um, if we hit s z zero and enter to commit that then we're uh, basically scaling all of those selected points and those points are automatically pre-selected when we do our extrude so we're scaling them all to uh, zero in the z-axis now one thing you should look at this here is remember what the other model looked like now look at the bottom of here we have this horrendous amount of geometry down here because every vertex from the top surface of the model has been projected down to give us our bottom surface so basically we've got all of this data we've doubled the size of our model and it's useless it's just a very very expensive way to define a plane um, sometimes doesn't always work but sometimes if you go into uh, face select and then hit delete and say dissolve faces uh, sometimes you can get it there it worked you can get it to dissolve all of those faces and say okay this is actually just a plane now again this is the uh, the blender model so it's calling it a plane uh, when we export it as an STL it will break this up into into triangles but there will be a whole lot fewer data points there than there would be if we had left the entire top surface projected onto it um, so this is useful at times when you may not be able to boolean a model or you want to keep all of your data uh, intact um, this is a, a useful technique to use um, so this is uh, just a, a simple way to use different tools that allow you to access some different data sets if you have problems with trying to do a, a, a lidar print from using the original workflow or you may like this workflow better it's a little bit simpler a little bit more work in blender cleaning it up um, but it's a little bit uh, you know simpler coming out of, of the uh, the process um, so it's just something else to have in your in your uh, toolkit um, so keep listening to the videos check out my podcast that I do with Dr. Andy Cohen it's called 3D Printing Today um, it's available on iTunes and uh, Stitcher Radio so thanks for listening